daily military reports reported. British-operated F-35B Lightning stealth jets are scheduled to fly combat missions over the Middle East during the first operational cruise of the Royal Navy aircraft carrier HMS Queen Elizabeth, which starts later this month. The short takeoff and vertical landing STOVL, jets, which will be embarked on the Royal Navy flagship alongside examples from the U.S. Marine Corps, are the first British fighters to be embarked on an operational carrier since 2010, during the last days of the British Harrier jump jets. The F-35B Lightning jets pack a potent punch against Daesh and help prevent them from regaining a foothold in Iraq, said UK Minister for the Armed Forces James Heaping, in a statement released today, together with the accompanying images, showing the first British F-35Bs to go aboard the carrier for the upcoming cruise. This is a prime example of the UK Armed Forces stepping forward with our allies to confront persistent threats around the world. It is Global Britain in action. This deployment represents the embodiment of the UK's joint expeditionary capability and utilizing the F-35Bs in the fight against Daesh will further demonstrate our commitment to securing their global defeat, said Chief of Joint Operations, Vice Admiral Sir Ben Key. While the UK has previously committed F-35Bs to its counter-ISIS campaign, known as Operation Shader, on that occasion, in the summer of 2019, the jets were flown from the Royal Air Force's land base at Akrotiri, in Cyprus, in the eastern Mediterranean. In the meantime, RAF Eurofighter Typhoons have been spearheading the Operation Shader missions over Iraq and Syria, including the recent employment of the Storm Shadow Standoff cruise missile. For their next combat deployment, the F-35Bs from the RAF's famous No. 617 Squadron, the Dambusters, will be flying from HMS Queen Elizabeth as the warship begins Carrier Strike Team 21, or CSG-21, a cruise that will take it via the Mediterranean to the Indo-Pacific. The timing of this latest combat deployment of the UK F-35B is notable in that the tempo of coalition airstrikes against ISIS targets has reduced significantly since the previous deployment at Akrotiri. Indeed, between late 2019 and early 2020, the RAF almost ceased airstrikes in the region altogether. On the other hand, there has been somewhat of an uptick in activity since the beginning of this year, including the aforementioned Typhoon cruise missile raid and a series of strikes last March that targeted around 100 cave hideouts in a 10-day period. Overall, however, it remains to be seen how much of an impact the carrier-based F-35Bs will be able to have on the conflict, which will depend also on the time that HMS Queen Elizabeth has planned to remain on station in the Mediterranean. There is no confirmation so far as to whether VMFA-211 will take part in these combat missions, although the squadron has already accumulated significant combat experience with the F-35B, since first taking it to war over Afghanistan in 2018. Exactly how many F-35Bs will be embarked and board the carrier has also not been formally announced, but the UK Ministry of Defence says it will be the largest number of F-35Bs ever to go to sea and it has also stated that eight British jets will go aboard the carrier. However, many more US jets join them. This implies the total will be more than the 15 British and American jets that were on the carrier for an exercise last September, which you can read more about here. The UK Ministry of Defense has, in the past, also said that the fixed-wing air group for CSG-21 will be the biggest since HMS Hermes, a significantly smaller carrier, but one that served in the Falklands conflict with an air group of 16 Sea Harriers and 10 RAF Harrier GR-3s, plus helicopters. The first British F-35Bs, reportedly four aircraft, departed their base at RAF Marham in eastern England on May 2 to embark on HMS Queen Elizabeth. On the U.S. Marine Corps side, 10 F-35Bs arrived at RAF Lakenheath, home of the U.S. Air Force's 48th Fighter Wing, in late April. According to eyewitness reports, nine of those jets had departed Lakenheath for the carrier as of May 3rd and, should all those jets go aboard, that would provide an impressive 18-strong fixed-wing component. Ahead of CGS-21, the carrier strike group, including embarked aircraft, will take part in a two-week series of maneuvers, Exercise Strike Warrior, off the Scottish coast. This will involve more than 20 warships, three submarines, and 150 aircraft from 11 nations. The culmination of Strike Warrior will see the Carrier Strike Group certified ready for deployment, setting the stage for CSG-21, which is described by the UK Ministry of Defence as the largest concentration of maritime and airpower to leave the UK in a generation. The Ministry says the deployment is committed to confronting persistent threats around the world and will make a meaningful contribution to global security.
The 28-week CSG-21 deployment will cover around 26,000 nautical miles and take in the Mediterranean, Indian Ocean, and the Asia-Pacific regions. It includes planned visits to India, Japan, South Korea, and Singapore, as well as cooperation with the armed forces from each nation. Alongside HMS Queen Elizabeth, the remaining Royal Navy CSG-21 complement will comprise the Type 45 destroyers HMS Diamond and HMS Defender, the Type 23-class frigates HMS Kent and HMS Richmond, the replenishment tanker RFA Tidespring, the store ship and fleet tanker RFA Fort Victoria, and an undisclosed Royal Navy Stuke-class nuclear attack submarine. Other warships joining them will be the Arleigh Burke-class destroyer USS The Sullivans, and the Dutch De Zeven Provincian class frigate HNLMS Evertsen. F-35Bs are being provided by No. 617 Squadron and the U.S. Marines Corps Marine Fighter Attack Squadron, VMFA-211, the Wake Island Avengers, home based at Marine Corps Air Station Yuma in Arizona. Meanwhile, helicopters for CSG-21 will include multipurpose Wildcat HMA-2s from 815 NAWs, anti-submarine warfare and airborne early warning and control Merlin HUM 2s from 820 NAWs, and commando Merlins from 845 NAWs. The Crow's Nest Merlin helicopters, in particular, are a key component of CSG-21, although this program has seen significant delays and full operational capability for the type will not now be declared until May 2023. As for the Lightning, it was always clear that the Marine Corps would make up a significant proportion of any large-scale carrier deployment at least in the near term, with only 18 F-35Bs having been delivered to the United Kingdom so far. As well as the carrier strike commitment, these jets are also required for other missions and training, a process that you can read about in detail here. With a continued question mark over the total number of F-35Bs the United Kingdom will finally order, it's likely that the Marine Corps will remain an important part of future deployments by the two Royal Navy carriers, as well. Regardless of the operator, the fact that such a significant number of F-35Bs will go aboard a carrier for an operational cruise is a significant achievement for the United Kingdom, as it steadily rebuilds a fixed-wing carrier capability that was lost for almost a decade. Indeed, there have been some claims that CSG-21 represents a level of capability unmatched anywhere outside the US Navy.